In this problem, we're looking at the hydrostatic pressure generated by a water tower that's 30 meters high. So I have a little blue faucet down here to measure the pressure at. And then we're going to open the faucet and ask what's the speed of the water that's flowing out. So we have a hydrostatics problem first and then a hydrodynamics problem to follow it up. So what about that hydrostatics question? For these problems, we seem to always be comparing two different points in a connected fluid. And so I'm going to label those as 1 and 2. Now, what part of what's not shown here is that there's a system of pipes that's actually connecting these two things. So it's really just a very oddly shaped container. But we already know that all that matters is the depth in the fluid, not the shape of the container. If we're talking about gauge pressure here, then P1 is equal to 0. This is open to the atmosphere. Then I apply my formula for pressure at a depth under a fluid. And I find that P2 is just rho GH, where rho there is the density of water, which you may recall is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. And I'm going to come out with my water pressure in pascals. Pascals are very small, so this comes out to 294,000 pascals. Another conversion you may need to be reminded of is that there are 6,895 pascals in a PSI or a pound per square inch. When I apply that conversion, I get 42.6 PSI. And this is actually a very realistic residential water pressure. In the second part of the problem, we switch to talking about hydrodynamics. I'm going to open up this valve and water starts to flow out. Maybe it's just a sprinkler. And what changes here physically at the faucet is we've now exposed the water at the end of the faucet to atmospheric pressure. So now at this point, P2 is going to be equal to zero. And then our strategy, of course, is to apply Bernoulli's equation. And Bernoulli's equation is nothing more than an expression of the conservation of energy density within a fluid. And I'll post a link when the video is done to the derivation of this, but here it is. All right, so without getting too far into the weeds, pressure is a type of energy density stored in the compression of the fluid. This term is a gravitational potential energy density. This term is a kinetic energy density. All right, so an assumption is required to make progress here. And the assumption is that V1, so the speed of the fluid up here, is approximately equal to zero. And I hope you agree with that. If you're running a single sprinkler down there, you're not going to see the water level dropping so fast that you have to worry about the kinetic energy of the fluid inside the water tower. Aside from that, it looks like we're ready to go. So I have, because I'm talking about gauge pressure again, P1 equals 0, P2 equals 0. If you wanted to talk about absolute pressure, those would both be equal to one atmosphere, and they would still cancel out, so it doesn't matter. And then the height of this faucet that I opened at point 2 is 0. And the kinetic energy of the fluid in the water tower is approximately zero. So I end up with quite the simplification. Rho G H1 equals one half rho V2 squared. And the density of the water is going to cancel out. And I end up with 2 G H1 is equal to V2 squared. In other words, the speed of the water coming out of that faucet is root 2 G H1. I could write that as the square root of 2 times 9.8 times 30. And when I crunch those numbers, I get a speed of 24.3 meters per second. Now, I just want to point out here that this first look at fluid dynamics and using Bernoulli's equation, it assumes that our fluid is frictionless. And in almost every real world system, friction actually plays a major role. It's not just a minor correction. So if you were to actually test this, you're going to find a speed way less than this just because of the fluid friction in the water system. One additional note here, this expression, V2 equals square root 2GH, is known as Torricelli's result. Basically, it's saying, what's the fluid speed going to be if you poke a small hole in the bottom of a tank so that we can argue the kinetic energy density doesn't matter inside the tank? If you find the physics content on Zach's lab helpful, Click on the Zax Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.